I found the 15 coolest villains in all of Star Wars. And in this video, I'm going to rank them from absolute worst to absolute best. Now, be warned, this list contains more than just Sith. I'm including bounty hunters, commanders, and even some cyborgs in the mix. But without further ado, let's get into it. We're going to kick off the list at number 15 with General Hux. Now, I will admit, in The Force Awakens, General Hux was like at least a cooler character, you know? The movie actually made him into a somewhat commanding figure, and he did have that sick scene where he was yelling at those stormtroopers and giving that speech as Starkiller Base blew up all those planets. That was a great scene. And so when I watched that, I was like, all right, maybe next movie he'll be as good or better. I mean, why wouldn't I assume that he would be as cool and as intimidating in the next movie as he was in this one? Supreme <laughs> Ah, come on, man. Well, maybe he'll get better I'm in the next movie. Oh, come on. How is this guy a spy? He literally blew up like eight planets. He probably killed trillions of people. Can you imagine for a second if one year before World War II came to an end, German Chancellor Adolf Hitler came to the Allies and asked if they wanted to get some friendship bracelets? Oh, Winston Churchill and Franklin Delano Roosevelt would take that opportunity so quickly, it's not even funny. I mean, personally, I would trust the most evil man on the planet if he asked if he could be friends again. What could possibly go wrong? Anyway, what I am saying is that Hux did have potential, but as a result of making him the biggest joke in the sequels, well, I guess the second biggest joke, because you can't really beat Finn when it comes to that, he is ranked at number 15 on my list. Up next at number 14 is none other than than the Grand Inquisitor himself. I just know that Dave Filoni thought this guy was gonna be so cool when he made him, and I think that Die Hard Rebels fans do really like him, but to me, the Grand Inquisitor always felt like such a generic sidekick, you know? It's like in a high school drama movie, where the main bully, i.e. Darth Vader, has a big muscly goon who follows him around and does his dirty work, i.e. the Grand Inquisitor, but when the main character of the movie learns like, I don't know, how to get a life, or probably just kung fu, the goon gets absolutely smacked by the main character. Honestly, to me, that kind of feels like the plot of Rebels, at least in the first couple of seasons. And on top of that, I also despise the Grand Inquisitor's lightsaber. What makes the double-bladed lightsaber cool in the first place is when the user can actually use it well. It's actually impressive when you can spin it in cool ways by yourself without a big machine in the hill making it do it for you. And when you tap a button to make the lightsaber spin by itself while you stand there with your arm out grinning like a fourth grader who just discovered what Nutella was for the first time, it's really not impressive whatsoever and you look like a dork. So because of that, the Grand Inquisitor is number 14 on my list. Alright, at number 13, we have Supreme Leader Snoke. Snoke is actually wildly similar to General Hux in the sense that he was also cool and interesting in The Force Awakens. But then Ryan Johnson came along and subverted all of our expectations because everyone knows that's why The Last Jedi was such a great Star Wars movie, you know? I mean, if I'm remembering correctly, it was the most popular Star Wars movie of all time and the fans absolutely loved it. But the difference between Hux and Snoke was that Snoke was actually cool for the beginning of The Last Jedi. We walk into that throne room for the first time and Snoke's in there hitting people with Force Lightning and then Rey walks in and I gotta say, when Rey was getting clowned on by Snoke, I was the fourth grader who just discovered Nutella because I was grinning from ear to ear in that theater. Honestly, Honestly, if Snoke had just kept that up for, I don't know, the rest of the sequel trilogy and been the main villain, then maybe he would have actually been higher on this list. But you know, it's like I often say, there's nothing quite like getting a lightsaber through the old breadbasket to make someone look like an absolute chump. After this scene, it was really hard for me to look at Snoke and see anything other than an absolute fool for letting a lightsaber get spun 90 degrees right in front of him and then ignite through his body. He was definitely not a very cool villain, especially compared to some of the other big baddies coming up in this video. And because this list does go from worst villain in Star Wars to best villain in Star Wars, Wars, I promise that you will absolutely want to stick around to see who is the all-time best. So stay tuned for that. All right, time to move on. Next up on the list at number 12 is the one, the only, Gustavo Fring, proud owner of the Los Pollos Hermanos Chicken Restaurant. And man, those guys got the best fried chicken in all of New Mexico, believe me. Gustavo Fring is a kind-hearted man and a dedicated member of his community who has some absolutely cutting-edge ideas. And let me tell you, when I say this guy does not skip chest day, he does not skip chest day. Oh, the amount of money I would give just to feel those. <sighs> well, that's neither here nor there. But obviously, Obviously, I'm talking about the Mandalorian's greatest foe, Moff Gideon. Like the entire Mandalorian show, Moff Gideon has slowly gotten worse and worse with each passing season. Because in season one, I'll be honest, he was a pretty good villain. But then in season two, he got thrown into the ending because the writers obviously forgot that they needed a grand finale for the season. And then in season three, he got brought back again, and now he's trying to clone himself so that he has the force, which I gotta admit is a really weird plot point. I mean, you've gotta be, what, 70? You're not exactly a spring chicken anymore, and your plan is to make organic copies of yourself, try to stuff the force into them like a fat guy stuffing soggy fries down his swollen throat, pray desperately that you can find some makeshift way to teach these clothes how to use the force that they now have, and that's assuming that your plan to put the force inside of them in the first place actually worked, and if, only if, 
all of that goes according to plan, then you just gotta hope desperately that they'll submit to your authority because after all, you taught them how to use the force, so they're probably more powerful than you. Yeah, seems like an absolutely brilliant plan to me personally. Anyway, as much as I do love Moff Gideon's incredibly realistic Halloween costumes, I just don't think that he's that interesting as a villain. And it feels like whenever the show wants you to feel the stakes a little more, they just give him an upgrade. He already starts off with a battalion of stormtroopers. Well, not enough. All right, let's give him the dark saber. Mm, gonna have to do better than that. Okay, what about a troop of killer death robots? No, 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 scratch that. An army of loyal Beskar armored soldiers. Yeah, not quite there yet, buddy. Fine, literal Mandalorian Beskar armor with these sick looking horns on top. I mean, what else can I even say anymore? Regardless, I think the number 12 spot is a good place for Gustavo to sit at. Number 11 is the Clone Wars legend himself, Savage Opress. Now look, I actually do like Savage quite a bit, but the problem with him is that he's literally discount Darth Maul. That's it. And at least Maul got his skill from years of training, whereas Savage was a scrawny runt who bulked for like four seconds and then spent like two more minutes learning how to use the force. And all of a sudden, he's this crazy powerful maniac that no one in the galaxy can stop. And then for the rest of the show, he proceeds to have no more character development whatsoever. So while he is cooler than the first four characters on this list, he just can't compare to the 10 that are coming up. At number 10, we have Kylo Ren. Now, in a YouTube short of mine, I accidentally called him a Sith, and I got absolutely roasted in the comments because apparently he's not a Sith. So that's that. Anyway, Kylo Ren is by far the lamest Sith Lord in Star Wars. Like a lot of characters on this list, he was kind of cool in The Force Awakens, and I gotta say, his lightsaber is absolutely dope. But then he started taking off his helmet and whining and screaming and getting destroyed in every single fight he got into, and I just completely lost interest in the guy. Besides, maybe he shouldn't even be on this list in the first place, because canonically, he did die a good guy, so I'm not really sure how that works. Then again, to quote Gandalf, I'd be a fool of a took if I didn't put Darth Vader on this list, and he's technically a good guy now too. So for now, Kylo Ren can live at the number 10 spot. Up next at number 9 is Jango Fett. Jango Fett is a pretty cool guy, and I actually think he's a good character, but the problem is that we only see him for a couple of minutes. And while he does have one good fight with Obi-Wan and then an epic space battle, he dies pretty quick after that. The best part about Jango is definitely his gadgets and gizmos, and I gotta admit, from a technology standpoint, he's by far the best in the biz. He's got a jetpack, a grappling wire, a surface-to-air missile on his back, razor blades on his gauntlets, a flamethrower, and some pretty dope weapons on Slave 1. And those are the things that we know about. The reason I've ranked him about the middle of the list is because, if you think about it, that's probably where he belongs. He's cool enough to not be at the bottom, but there are way better villains who definitely deserve to be above him. And if you're some Jango Fett stan who doesn't like that, then you can go, I don't know, cry somewhere. Number 8 is Boba Fett, and I gotta say, the only reason that he's not ranked worse on my list is because his appearances in Clone Wars and The Mandalorian save him. I did not enjoy the book of Boba Fett whatsoever. I thought it made him a wishy-washy, indecisive pushover and completely changed his character for no real reason whatsoever. And even though he was a literal child in the Clone Wars, he's still somehow cooler there than he was in his own TV show. And in The Mandalorian, he was the Boba Fett that everyone wanted to see, with ruthless fighting, vicious techniques, and a complete domination of any stormtrooper that got in his way. If the book of Boba Fett had never existed, I would have ranked him way closer to the number one spot, because frankly, I just thought that the show was a complete betrayal of the character that everyone already liked, and it just showed that Disney has no grasp on what the audience wants to see or any understanding of the characters that they're messing with. Alrighty, this is where ranking these villains gets mighty tricky because from now on, all of these villains are actually really cool, and ranking them from best to worst was very hard for me to do. So if you guys don't like where I put certain characters, feel free to let me know in the comments where you would have put them. And oh, that's right, before I forget, hello there everybody, my name is Jedward, and if this is your first time watching my channel, I make tons of videos about Star Wars and other franchises like it. And if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you'd smash that subscribe button. Thank you, and now on to the last half of this list. At number 7, we have none other than the hairless harpy herself, Asajj Ventress. Ventress is pretty interesting because she starts off as just a hardcore bad guy, and then, over the course of the Clone Wars show, slowly starts to turn, I don't know, better? She was never morally perfect, but she got better. I will say, I'm a huge fan of her curved hilt lightsabers, so that's just an all-around W for me, and I like how over time, she became more of a complex character, and starts to get her own character development. However, one thing that I would recommend is that if she can physically grow hair, she really should, because the whole third stage cancer patient undergoing intense chemotherapy look is really not something to strive for. And if you ever find anyone who would call Ventress, I don't know, easy on the eyes, then they're freaking lying, and you gotta call them out on that. Anyway, is there a- wait, 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 do you hear that noise? That's right, at number six, we have none other than General Grievous. Grievous is really cool, because there's like no complexity to this guy, which usually is a bad thing in a character, I will admit, but it works for him, because now, he's nothing but an unrestrained beast with nothing holding him back. 
let me put it this way. When a Clone Wars episode came on and the villain for the episode was going to be Grievous, you didn't really care about the plot that much. You were just excited because you knew darn well that at the end of the episode, there was going to be a sick lightsaber duel. And when this guy's arm split in half, oh boy, you knew you were in for a treat. Although, I just gotta say it. I don't care how good you are with a lightsaber, if you have a single blade and you're going against some guy with four blades, it would not be that hard for him to kill you like that. I mean, literally, if you have four blades, you swing two of your lightsabers horizontally from opposite sides of him at the same time, and if they have one lightsaber, they can't block two coming different ways, so he gets split five ways from Sunday. But you know what? That's besides the point. At number five, we have the legendary Cad Bane, who needs no introduction. Cad Bane is by far one of the best things to come out of the Clone Wars, and I would probably say that at this point in time, he is my favorite bounty hunter in all of Star Wars. Maybe if someone's TV show wasn't absolute garbage, it wouldn't be this way, but you know what? It is what it is. This guy's got that sick hat, those dual blasters, the coolest voice in the galaxy. I mean, just take a listen. Hello there, little lady. See what I mean? And on top of everything, he's actually a really crafty guy. He's like the opposite of Grievous, in the sense that when he's going to be in an episode, I can't wait to see his plan. Like that one time where he stole a clone trooper's armor and then snuck aboard a Republic Venator and then escaped off the Venator? Oh, pure gold. I was actually so mad when he got killed off in Book of Boba Fett. And on top of that, they didn't even make him look good in live action. Absolutely disgraceful. Coming in at number four, we have Darth Maul. Darth Maul was already pretty cool when he appeared in Phantom Menace, what with his double-bladed lightsaber and crazy moves, but then Dave Filoni made the genius decision to throw him into Clone Wars, and that really brought him to the next level. The whole arc where Maul came back with his sick robot legs and became the literal king of Mandalore was awesome, and that season 7 finale with him versus Ahsoka was more legendary than me in the bathroom after a bad night at the all-you-can-eat buffet. Man, those fried shrimp really screwed me over. But yeah, not much more that I can say. He's like three times cooler than Savage Press, and it's not even close. Getting into the top three now, you probably should have a pretty good idea in that old noggin of yours of who's coming up next. So it shouldn't be too much of a shock to you that at number three, I put my boy Darth Sidious. This this guy is by far the smartest character in Star Wars by every metric, and I would argue that he's maybe the most powerful villain too. Sidious has got no shortage of skills, and he's kind of a baller at literally everything, from force lightning to lightsaber fighting and overall skill with the force. Now, be warned, this coming up is a very hot take, and I think I'm probably one of the only people I know who thought this, but I did not like it whatsoever when they brought him back in the Rise of Skywalker. I know, I know, surround my house with pitchforks and torches if you must, but I did not think that he was very cool in that movie, and honestly, in his duel versus Rey, I could not have cared less who won. But that does not change the fact that for the rest of Star Wars, this guy was an absolute sigma, and the number three spot is perfect for him. Alright, and now for number two, I've been looking forward to this, it's none other than Darth Tyrannus, better known as Count Dooku. Honestly, I seriously contemplated putting Dooku at the number one spot because if you've been around my channel before, you know that I am a huge Dooku fan. One of the many things that makes this guy so cool to me is that in the actual movies, Count Dooku isn't intrinsically a bad guy. He's just a man who sees the corruption in the Republic and the Jedi Order and thinks that the Separatists should have the right to break off and do their own thing. Then the Clone Wars rolled around and Dave Filoni did need a big bad guy, so he made Dooku like a maniacal sociopath, but it was still cool. Another thing that makes Dooku so epic is just how good he is with a lightsaber. I actually personally just think that his lightsaber is super cool on its own because, like I said earlier, your boy's a sucker for a nice curved hilt. But on top of that, he's so cool to watch in a duel because he's just insanely smooth and classy and suave and debonair. The James Bond of Star Wars, some have called him. Not me. Some. Not me. But some. On top of everything, he's so powerful with the force, and when someone makes him mad, he just turns around very slowly and calmly hits them with a deadly blast of force lightning. Oh man, what an absolute legend. I just love everything about this guy, and thank goodness the Clone Wars TV show centered around him, because in my opinion, he was criminally underused in the prequels movies. Alright, before I get to number one, I just want to give some honorable mentions really quick. Pong Krell is definitely up there. I mean, what an absolute psychopath. I'm not sure he counts as a villain, because he is loyal to whoever gives him the best deal, and I guess that's every bounty hunter, but regardless, Hondo Onaka is just an all-around great character, and he's literally Jack Sparrow, so I love that guy. Finally, Pre Vizsla was a cool character when he was alive, and that duel between him and Maul was just epic. Okay, at the number one spot, if you didn't see this coming, you're a complete idiot, or you just don't like Star Wars, because everyone knows that the coolest villain in all of Star Wars is, cue the music, Darth Vader. That's right, this Dark Lord of the Sith is definitely number one, and there's a reason that every single human on planet Earth knows who he is. Along with being one of the most complex characters in all of cinema, his whole story from Slave Boy to Jedi to husband to cyborg to Sith is truly a beautiful arc. And on a more superficial level, that guy can swing a lightsaber. Holy cow, that scene from Rogue One was insane. Honestly, I think one of the best ideas for a Star Wars TV show would be Tales of Vader's adventures around the galaxy. I mean, how cool would that be? You could take any of the dozens of comics about him and animate them or turn them into live action, and who wouldn't want to hear, Oh, I'm surrounded by his fear and dead men in an actual TV show. I mean, I'm getting chills just thinking about that. But speaking of Star Wars TV shows, there are already a lot of good ones out there and a lot of bad ones out there. And I actually ranked them all from worst 
first to best in this video right here so you need to go check that out right now if you're interested and if you like this video i promise that you like that one thanks for watching